Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing my new and improved Photosphere. And if you like this video, hit that like button, hit share, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. Check out my channel for a bunch more Photoshop Elements stuff, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, we'll start off this by choosing a whole bunch of these pictures. Let me bring up the organizer. There we go. And I have mine filled with a bunch of my previous projects here on YouTube. Now what you need to do is to go through and choose out 25 of these. So I have mine already selected little check marks right there. Just hold the control key down and click on the pictures that you want to include. So I have 25 already set to go. Once you have that done, then go up here to File, come down to Print, and in here we're going to be setting this up and printing that to a contact sheet. Most likely yours will show something like that when you first open it up. So at the very top where it says Select Printer, choose the Adobe PDF printer, and then come down where it says Select Type of Print, that's Section 4, change that to Contact Sheet, select a layout, set this for five columns. And then with 25 pictures, there'll be five across and five down, just like that. And then click on print. This will then take this out as an Adobe PDF file. Now I've already done mine, so I won't be doing that little print step. Let's just switch over now to the editor, and I'll show you how to handle that PDF file. Okay, here we are back in the editor, and I've closed down that sample. I'll go to open, and I have that one right there. That's the one that I saved out. Choose open, and in here, the default settings should be just fine. Go ahead and just leave it at the default settings. Choose OK. And there we go. There is that contact sheet with the five across and the five down. Now what we need to do, because we have all these spaces in here, is we need to remove the spaces out of this. It's actually very easy to do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this one. I'll just grab my zoom tool and we'll zoom this in so it's just about clear across the screen. There we are. Okay, now grab the rectangular marquee tool. I have my feathering down here set at zero, and then it's come just outside, and then pull the marquee down, so you go clear to the right-hand side, and then down below that second line of photos. Then move over here to the Move tool, and then just using the up arrow key, just tap that up into place. It will take several little steps. Notice that it automatically grabs each one of those images when you do that trick. When you get to this close, just watch your pictures and wait until you see that space go away. And I found it takes a couple of times to get it exactly right. There we go. And then deselect. Do the exact same thing for the next three lines. I'll do one more of these. Just grab this, select that section right there, go back to the Move tool, and then use the arrow keys here to move this up into position. There we go. And again, just look for that overlap and try to get it so they're just touching, maybe just overlapping just one notch right there, and then deselect. Okay, I'm going to do these last two rows here off camera, and bring the camera then right back up, and we'll do the sideways selections. Okay, everything is now lined up vertically. We now need to line this up horizontally. Same basic idea, but we have to zoom out to do this step. So let's grab the zoom tool and back out until I can see the whole page, or click on fit screen. There we go. And then, same idea, grab that rectangular marquee tool and come down here and again stay in the transparent areas and then pull up and over and go above the top one, let go, same exact idea, grab the move tool and then use the left arrow key to move that over so that it just overlaps. Looks like it's right about there. All right, and deselect, looks good. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll finish these three off camera. Okay, there we go. They're all nicely lined up now. Now hold the control key down and click on the thumbnail over here on the layers. And that selects just that part of the image. And then go up to image, come down to crop, and it should automatically crop it in at that setting. And then we can go ahead and deselect. Okay, that's the hardest part of this whole project. That is now finished. All right, now we're going to put in that 3D warp effect. And for that, it's up here at the filter. Come down to distort. Come down to spherize. And then take the control here and push it all the way to the right at 100% and choose OK. And there's that warp sphere effect. Now I want to find the exact center of this. Easy to do. You can kind of see the center mark right there. But I'll make it real easy. And I'll grab guidelines and pull my guidelines in right to the center. Vertical and horizontal like that. Now if they're not snapping on the center point, go up here to view. Come down to snap to and make sure that document bounds and grid are selected in layers. 
It should all be selected anyway. That's the default settings. Okay, now go over here to the Shape Tools and grab the Ellipse Tool, set this on Circle and from Center, and then come right onto that center point. There we are. And then pull out until this is the same size as your page. So it should be maybe just in just a touch from the edges and let go. That makes a nice circle at that point. Okay, now hold the control key down, click on that thumbnail for that layer. That selects that. You can now hide that. Come down to layer one right here and hit the layer mask button. And that removes all that outside stuff and leaves us with just that sphere. We can now get rid of those guides. We're no longer needing those. I'll just do clear guides. Okay, now I need to have this larger than this. So let's go up to image, come down to resize canvas size right here. Make sure that anchor is in the middle. It should be, that's the default. And then over here, change this to percent and then change that to 120% on both the width and on the height as well. There we go, 120%. Okay, now let's bring in our background picture. Now you can use any picture you want. I just grab one that has some nebula stuff on it and we find that. That's right there, lobster nebula. Again, any picture you like doesn't matter. I think a bit darker is better for this. And then grab that background and slide it over here. Now if you don't have floating windows like this, just go up to the edit menu, come down to preferences and general, and make sure that this checkbox right here is checked. Then you'll have floating windows. Okay, let's now take this and resize it to fit. I'll just drag the corner out until it's just a little bit larger than that page. Choose OK. There we go. Now take this layer and drag it underneath our sphere layer. All right. One last step to do. Let's go back up here to the sphere layer. And that's putting a soap bubble on top of this thing. And I have one right over in here. Now on these images on the soap bubble and on the nebula and also on that one page with all those pictures on it, I have all those as downloads from my site if you want to practice with what I'm using here. Same thing, take the background and let's drag it over here. And this is a lot smaller as you can see. So I'll put it about at the center of the page. It looks like that's right about right here. Change the blend mode on this to screen. You can kind of see it in there. And then grab the corners on this. They're way out here. So I'm going to zoom out a bit further. Give myself some space. There we are. And I'll grab that corner. And now it's a matter of making this bubble larger until it fits right on top of that photosphere. It'll take a few moves to get this exactly right, but it's pretty straightforward. Just keep on pulling it until it's just the right size. You may need to pull the other corners or you may need to position it like this a little bit. And I think that is pretty good right here. Maybe a bit too wide this direction. I'm gonna pull this side in just a little bit. Looks like the bubble is not quite exactly round, but that's okay. Hit that check mark. Okay, you can use the arrow keys to nudge it around just a little bit until it gets exactly where you want it. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Actually, I think I'll pull this out and we'll float this again. There we go, and pull that down. And then we'll zoom in at that point and get this as large as we can. There it is. So there's the new and improved Photosphere effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share and subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos, Check out my channel, of course, and take a look at the link right down below for my complete training for Photoshop Elements. And I'll see you next time.